This is an operational video for the Zeiss Axiotron and Olympus AL1BL loader. Uh, due to the really fragile nature of you guys' uh, wafers, I really suggest that you familiarize yourself with the operation of this loader by using some uh, standard thickness wafers. You'll probably avoid quite a bit of breakage in familiarizing yourself with the system's operation. We, uh, we received this, this loader without a manual and uh, the only manual that we could get a hold of immediately was a Japanese language uh, tr translation of the manual. And so uh, what we have done is we have had someone translate just temper just in the interim, uh, translate some of the technical uh, troubleshooting sections of the manual. And we are working on having in the process we're having in the process of having a uh, a full translation done, which uh, we will forward to you guys as soon as it becomes available. In the meantime, uh, what we will send you is a temporary manual that includes, like I said, the troubleshooting aspects of the uh, of this lo loader, as well as a manual for a later Olympus similar Olympus AL100N loader, which. It does share some commonalities, but there are some substantial differences as well. So we're also providing this uh, this video to kind of fill in the fill in the blanks. The um, first thing to consider is that uh, there is one rather vulnerable part of this system, and that is this this transfer arm, also known as the F arm, and uh, it is it can be rather easily damaged. So uh, special care has to be made and making sure that when you start, especially when you're first starting up this, uh, this microscope motorized stage, that you don't have an interference issue. The first, and I'll take you through a process so you can uh, set this up and power up without doing any damage. The first thing to do is to make sure that the objective is in the uh, lowest magnification, the turret is on the lowest magnification objective. The way that is done is uh, the turret is rotated from these buttons here on the, near the base of the, lo of the uh, microscope. So once you have it on the 10x objective, uh, that is the one that gives the maximum clearance between the chuck and the objective. So once that is done, what you'll want to do is make sure that the stage uh, load axis, which you see here, is all the way to the right. That's operated manually, just as you see. The next thing to do is to come down here and make sure the stage is in the upper position, not the load position, but the the examination position. And the way you do that is by turning either of these two knobs rotated up into the highest position. Next what you want to do is power up the stage controller by flipping this switch right here. And what you'll see is you'll see the stage home. Now that it's homed you can uh, use the joystick assembly to move it into position. And what we'll do is we'll come over here and we'll make sure that we are we do not have a uh, a clearance issue. So what I'll do is I'll jog the stage over. As you see there's not a lot of clearance in between these components. What I want to do is make sure that the rail here for the load axis clears the top of the load arm, the transfer arm and that the, the base of the stage here clears the underside of the arm, which it is. But you can see the clearances are rather close. Now, once that's done, you'll note that there's a load button on the joystick assembly right here. When I press that, what this does is it moves the stage to the load position so that what I will do is that when I move the stage over from the rightmost, which is the, the inspection position, and you also always want to move it 
all the way to the right. There's a detent that holds the stage in that position. When you go to load or do a transfer, either loading a wafer onto the chuck or back to the loader, you slide this over and you'll see that there's a there's a little docking mechanism here and you'll see that tab move in and make this switch. Now you want to make sure that this goes all the way over. It's critical that this is pushed completely to the left because when the wafer is put back, transferred from the chuck, it has to be centered over this arm. If the wafer is not all the way over, when it transfers the um, the wafer will be off center on the arm and that means when it rotate when the arm rotates back around it will try to put the wafer back in the cassette slightly off center well slightly off center is not a problem for a typical wafer because it'll go on in there and it won't do any damage but these wafers being as thin as they are or if they if the edge of that tape of the wafer bottoms out in this slot I found that it will break the wafer so as I said, make sure the arm is completely over, and when you're doing a transfer, never move this arm while in the transfer process, because what you'll see is this arm will lift up, and it has to fit through this opening. If you're off center like this, when the arm comes up, it'll hit the bottom of the uh, of the stage, the chuck assembly here, and it'll bend the arm. And it'll damage the arm, and it won't pull a vacuum after that. So what we'll do at this point is we move the stage back over to the right completely. We will uh, we'll go ahead and power up the rest of the system. First thing you'll want to do is make sure that your air is turned on because several of the of the of the functions on this on the, of this uh, loader are operated pneumatically. And then you'll want to turn on your vacuum pump and then with the arm like I said completely low, with the lo load axis completely to the right you power up the loader and you'll see it's now ready you see the display is active and all that if you ever have to you should you normally should not need to but you can actually move this this load arm or rotate the uh, the transfer arm or F arm with the power off and with the air off. Normally that will not be necessary though. Normally it will home on power up. The first thing we'll demonstrate is uh, automatic operation. And basically what happens is now that the system is ready, as soon as this key comes and triggers a switch, it will initiate the loading of the first wafer. So I bring it in and it loads the wafer and it transfers. Now I can move over in the interim. I can do my microscopic examination. Then hit the load button again. That will put it in proper position for transfer and the next wafer will be transferred on and the first wafer placed back in and the next wafer is pulled. Move it over. And you'll notice that some of the slots are empty. The, uh, the, of course, the loader can determine whether there is a wafer present in any particular slot, and if it's not, it will simply skip that slot. And it will always put the wafer back in the same position, or same slot position that it took the wafer from. So now, and you can see here that uh, Number one wafer, the light is off because the wafer is back in the, in the slot. Number two and number three are out at the moment. So I can bring this back in, execute another transfer, bring it back out. Now one thing you'll notice is that the, the wafer is oriented with the slot on the, on the loader, on the uh, microscope. You'll see the slot is facing toward me at the six o'clock position. If I want to change that on subsequent wafers, I can change the orientation any way I want. So what I will do is, I can now transfer back. It'll remove that next wafer. 
and you'll see the orientation changes. Now, if I decide that I want to reject, if I reject this wafer or remove it, what I can do is I can push this button right here, wafer removal, and it will allow me to remove this wafer without causing an error. The loader does sense whether there's a wafer present here, and you will get an error if you were to forcibly remove a wafer without using that button. Now I can come back, execute another transfer, and you notice it skips the uh, return process as it should. Now, if I decide I want to halt the process, now I don't want to select any more wafers, what I can do is I can press manual at this point, and what I can do is I can switch off all the other wafers, as you see, and Now it will not pick any more wafers. So it puts the wafers back. Now, there are other modes of operation. You can use the machine to simply orient wafers or to do a macro inspection. Uh, if I tell it, if I remove holder, turn this function off, it no longer transfers the wafers. So that when I execute the load, what I will do is this, this start button in this case is functionally equivalent to triggering this switch here. So if I want to load a wafer onto the arm for visual inspection, I just simply push the button, and it'll bring the wafer out, and it will orient it, and it will halt. I can do my inspection, and I can set the time. It's set on infinite. So basically it will sit there and hold that wafer until I hit start again, and then we'll select the next wafer. If I switch it over to two seconds, I could do a two second inspection. Now we'll return that wafer. It'll pull the next wafer. And it'll wait two seconds. Then it'll put it back. Now, I can put it on manual there again. I can switch off all the rest of the wafers. I can tell it to put it back. Now I can go into a manual mode of operation, or let's do let's do random. Um, let's just go ahead and do a transfer as well. Now orientation, I can also switch that off so it does not orient wafers. It just pulls them out, it puts them on the stage, or you do your macro inspection, and then it goes right back in without orienting. It. But uh, say I want to do wafers 1, 10, and 25. I can make that selection. And now I bring it in. It'll pull a wafer. Transfer it. Now. Transfer back. Now we'll go straight to wafer 25. And then loads the wafer back into the cassette. Well, that's pretty much it for what I have to demo right now. Uh, we, since we don't have the uh, all the complete translation, there there's some other parameters that can be set for this machine, and that's one of the things that's included is the DIT switch settings, which are behind this cover here. It's just a series of little switches that will alter the the mode of operation of the machine. Uh, when we get all of that translated in a, in a better format, something that's more comprehensible, we'll get that to you as well in the, in the full manual. But as it is, I'm not really going into any of those options and configuration options at this point. I think it's best just to use the machine, get familiarized with the system as it is, 
and um, I think that's pretty much it. And there again, if you have any other questions, feel free to call us at Class One, and we will uh, we'll do our best to answer any questions you might have.